Good afternoon. My name is Rudy Cazetto, and I'm proud to represent the people of Mississauga Lakeshore. I'd like to welcome Premier Ford and Minister Fullerton to Mississauga Lakeshore, along with this incredible group of leaders from across the healthcare sector. Over the last four months, our community has stepped up to support each other through one of the darkest periods in Ontario's history. Local businesses like Sure Good Foods, Meaty Meats gave money, supply, and food. At the Oasis Convention Center, my team prepared tens of thousands of meals for our frontline health care heroes. SIDAM Canada helped deliver it all to long-term care homes in Mississauga. 2,800 meals each month to Mount Sinai and hundreds to more to Birchmount Hospital in Scarborough. In turn, one of our colleagues delivered face shields for Camilla Care Community all the way from Scarborough Agent Court. Via IG computers made a generous donation through my website, rudycazetto.ca, all the way from Cambridge. I delivered these tablets to seniors at Camilla Care to help them stay socially connected. Anissa wrote, thank you for providing these tablets. That was the only way I could speak to my father. As the Premier says, this is the real spirit of Ontario. It's more important than every than we can support each other. Nowhere is the Ontario spirit more vibrant and alive than with heroic frontline staff at the Trillium Health Partners. They have worked tirelessly to care for COVID-19 patients, building bed capacity, ramping up testing at three COVID-19 assessment centers, and to stop the spread of this deadly virus in our community and in our long-term care homes. But you don't have to take my word for it. I'd like to invite to the podium a true leader in the fight against COVID-19, a champion for our frontline healthcare heroes and for modernizing the healthcare system. Michelle Demanuel, the CEO of Trillium Health Partners. Michelle, please come up. Good afternoon, everyone. I am Sheldon Emanuel, the President and CEO of Trillium Health Partners, and I want to welcome you on this afternoon in this uh, beautiful city of Mississauga. I just want to welcome also, obviously, our Premier of Ontario, Mr. Ford, the Honourable uh, Minister Fullerton, our Mayor of this fair city, Mayor Crombie, of course, Rudy, our MPP for the area, and Michael Lindsay, who's the president of Project Delivery for Infrastructure Ontario. These are the individuals who have helped to make this happen. I also want to acknowledge Karen Priest, our board chair from Hart House Hospice, and Teresa Greer, the executive director, our partners on this uh, land, who are also building a um, inpatient respite care for hospice. Carolyn Riseborough, our president of the Trillium Health Partners Foundation, is also here with us today. You know, I was just speaking with Minister Fullerton and we were reminded that the last time we gathered here, it was about ni uh, minus 19. There was snow that was coming down on the ground and it was December. And on that day, we announced the partnership with Hart House Hospice and that this would be the future site of long-term care and a health centre in Mississauga. A centre that would include 220 bed long-term care facility and the hospice. At Trillium Health Partners, we believe in the power of partnership to deliver the best outcomes. That's not helpful. To deliver the best outcomes and to ensure that we are able to respond to the many needs of this community. Ontario has proven these past months that we are stronger together. Minister, I also want to thank you for your partnership and your trust that you have placed in Trillium Health Partners as we have worked alongside on the long-term care issues. You have known that there has been a need for this type of facility for a very long time, and you've worked with us to make this happen. Today in Mississauga, healthcare needs are growing faster than in any other community. In just over 10 years, the number of seniors will triple in this community. Mississauga has the fewest long-term care services, 20% fewer long-term care beds per capita than the provincial average. This is where we need action, and today we're getting it. But a lot has happened since December. 
We've been living through an unimaginable time. It's a global health crisis. And this community has been hit harder than many. Trillium Health Partners has treated one of the highest number of COVID-19 cases, and we've performed over 80,000 tests. But we have always said we will only get through this together. We called upon our community, and we've raised more than $5 million in donations. On behalf of the 12,000 healthcare workers and frontline workers at Trillium Health Partners, I wish to say thank you to this community for each and every day raising our spirits, being there when we needed you, and providing unprecedented support in such areas as supplies and equipment, a meal, or just a thank you on a really tough day. This community project is about community, and it starts with the community. We look forward to working closely with our government partners, our community members, our local residents and businesses, patients and families in the coming months ahead to make this happen. I also would be remiss if I did not thank our fearless leader. Premier, you have been unprecedented in this unprecedented time. You have led decisively, thoughtfully, and most importantly, compassionately. These all add up to one important word, authentically. That authenticity has shone through on the hardest days as we've been guided by your sheer will and the will that you channel of 13 million Ontarians to move forward together through this storm. Today represents another leap through that storm. Today represents action on one of the toughest parts of the healthcare system today, rebuilding our long-term care system. It is with my great pleasure that I introduce the Premier of Ontario, the Honourable Doug Ford. Thank you. Well, th thank you so much, Michelle, and thank you for the kind words, but it's Michelle and her whole team that uh, are, the, are the heroes and all the frontline healthcare workers. Well, good afternoon, everyone. It's great to be here with Minister Fullerton, MPP Cazetto, and Mayor Crombie. Mayor, thank you for being here. You are a true champion for this beautiful city. My friends, I absolutely love the people of Mississauga. They are hardworking, down-to-earth people. And we have an incredible group of provincial representatives here in Mississauga. MPP Khalid Rashid, MPP Rudy Cazetto, MPP Natalia Kusandova, and MPP Deepak Anand, and MPP Sharif Saboy, and MPP Nina Tangri. These representatives are working day and night for the people of Mississauga. And today's fantastic announcement is proof that they're getting results. I also want to recognize Michelle, again, your incredible Michelle and Alan and the whole team here at Trillium Health Partners, all 12,000 of them. I want to thank all our nurses, doctors, personal support workers, hospital staff who have been working around the clock to keep the people of Mississauga safe and healthy. Thank you for everything you do, day in and day out. Thank you for supporting our hardest hit long-term care homes during this pandemic. When we needed reinforcements, you were there. You did incredible work at the Camilla home and many others. And we're all here today because we won't accept the status quo in our province's long-term care homes. For far too long, many of these homes have been neglected Government after government failed to make the investments. They failed to take action. Well, that ends now. I promised to take action. I promised the families and the residents that we would take action. And as your Premier, I intend on keeping my promises. It's no secret that the system is in desperate need. We need thousands of long-term care beds we need to upgrade our existing homes and build new ones in growing communities across the province. We need to put air conditioning in every home. As a government, we made a commitment. Over the next 10 years, we're going to build 30,000 more long-term care beds. And we put our money where our mouth is. With a historic investment of $1.75 billion for long-term care infrastructure projects. To get there, we need bold new solutions and the political will to implement them. 
like our new modernized funding model, a model that will allow us to build more beds faster, upgrade existing beds to modern design standards. And we're already well on our way with 128 projects already in the pipeline, 7,800 new beds on the way, 11,800 older beds ready to be upgraded. Compare this to what happened before we took office. Only 600 new beds were added to our long-term care system between 2011 to 2018. In that time, demand bed for beds grew by 20% but the number of beds increased by less than 1%. This was a lost opportunity to meet the needs of Ontario seniors. As Premier, I take ownership of this problem. We didn't create it, but mark my words, we're going to fix it. And today, we're taking another leap forward, and I'm proud and excited to announce a historic new accelerated build pilot project for long-term care homes. We're working with our innovative partners from Trillium Health, and Infrastructure Ontario. And as Michelle mentioned, Michael Lindsay, thank you for being here today. And I have to recognize our incredible labor partners who will be essential to getting this done. And they're absolute champions. We have Joe Anthony and Jack from Leuna, James St. John from Central Building Trades, Bruno Mandic from the International Union of Painters and Allied Trades, Ian DeWard from Christian Labor Association of Canada, and Patrick Dillon from the Provincial Building and Construction Trades Council of Ontario. And finally, James Berry from the Construction Council of Ontario. We're all working together to deliver new long-term care homes and deliver them fast. Not in the typical four or five years, but next year. Together, we are building two new long-term care homes with 320 beds each by 2021, right here in Mississauga. That's 640 more seniors off the wait list by next year. That's 640 more seniors with the best access to care. With modern design standards, including air conditioning and the latest infection control protocols built into the design. That's 640 more beds in addition to the 7,800 we've planned. And if we can't make it work here, I'm sorry, if we can make it work here, we can make it work anywhere in the province. I want to thank Trillium Health and Infrastructure Ontario for bringing forward these innovative solutions and working with us to get the job done. I won't rest until every senior who needs it has access to a place that feels like home, a place that is safe and comfortable, a place where their kids, grandkids and friends can visit them and know that they are well being taken care of. My friends, we will build a better system and it starts here today on this very soil. Thank you and God bless the people of Ontario. Now I'll pass it over to Minister Fullerton. Thank you. Thank you, thank you Premier. So I'm excited to be here today and I wanna thank Michelle Demanuel uh, from Trillium Health and Mayor Bonnie, Bonnie Crombie. And I want to acknowledge Michael Lindsay from Infrastructure Ontario as well. I want to recognize my colleague Rudy, Rudy Cazetto, MPP from Mississauga Lakeshore, who has worked tirelessly on behalf of his constituents who need long-term care. The shortage of long-term care beds across the province puts added strain on our health care system as thousands of applicants are currently in hospitals awaiting placement into their next home. We remain committed to providing our most vulnerable people with the care they need in a safe and comfortable living space by modernizing the long-term care sector and creating capacity throughout the province. As our government continues to make progress on our broader modernization of the long-term care sector, today's announcement is another example of finding new and innovative ways of providing the care that our vulnerable seniors need. Currently, it takes approximately 36 months to build a long-term care home once a site and financing has been secured. Through a range of enabling measures, such as modular design and construction, rapid procurement, shorter construction timelines, and use of hospital lands, we are targeting completion in 2021. The impacts of COVID-19 are still being revealed.
and we will work with contractors to get the state-of-the-art facilities built years faster than traditional timelines. In a few months' time, 640 of our loved ones in Mississauga will call these new buildings home. And it's important to note that these 640 beds will be new capacity in our long-term care system. Through innovation, partnership, and modern solutions, our government will continue to improve our long-term care system and create new and modern spaces for our aging loved ones to call home and get the care they need and deserve. Thank you. Bring it, bring it home. We'll bring it home, Premier. Thank you. So good afternoon and thank you uh, for that kind introduction. Uh, I'm thrilled to have the Pre Premier Ford here, Minister Fullerton, right here in our beautiful city of Mississauga. It's been a while since we've all seen each other or one another in person, and it has been an, an incredibly tough few months for the people of Mississauga and for our province. The good news is that we've flattened the curve here in Mississauga, and we are coming out the other side stronger than ever and we're doing so together. Life is slowly returning to what is now our new normal. None of this would have been possible without the thousands of frontline healthcare workers from Trillium Health Partners working in lockstep with Peel Public Health and the province. And it is also thanks to our residents who stepped up by changing their daily routines, listening to the advice of healthcare professionals and diligently practicing COVID-19 prevention. We would not be here today without each and every one of you, and I thank you. But our work is far from over. As we begin the long road to recovery, we've started to reflect on the impact that this pandemic has had on our community. And without a doubt, our seniors in long-term care homes and vulnerable populations in congregate settings have been the hardest hit. We've lost members of our communities and families have been left devastated, demanding better care for our seniors. This crisis has exposed fractures in our long-term care system that need to be addressed. And I wanna personally thank Premier Ford and Minister Fullerton for recognizing these and taking, taking head on uh, and, and taking on the challenges that we face. Our seniors built this city and they deserve to age gracefully in peace, surrounded by the best care possible. Today's announcement responds to this call and it is another exciting step forward in the development of much needed long-term and palliative care right here in Mississauga. As one of the most culturally diverse cities in the world, our residents need access to innovative, community-based health services, all under one roof. Our seniors cannot wait another day. We need shovels in the ground, and we need to move quickly to meet the needs of our aging and growing population. Another critical part of this project, and one that is near and dear to my heart, is the building of Mississauga's first residential hospice in partnership with Heart House Hospice to help ensure members of our community have a place to live out their final days in peace, comfort and security and dignity. This new innovative health center will change lives. It's been a long time in coming and I know will be welcomed by families across Mississauga. Today's announcement by the Premier not only fast tracks those timelines, but nearly triples the numbers of long-term care beds initially planned for this site. So once again, I want to thank the province for recognizing the potential of this project and for working together with Trillium Health Partners to move it forward. Let's continue to work together as Team Mississauga to get shovels in the ground quickly and get the job done. Thank you. We're going to go to the phone line for questions. Just a reminder that it's one question and one follow-up. First question comes from Steve Cornwell from Mississauga News. Please go ahead. Hi. Hey, Premier Ford. 
How you doing? Uh, last week you said uh, Ontario would be getting uh, $7 billion as part of the uh, federal agreement, uh, that yeah. some is, and some of that would be going to municipalities like Mississauga and Branson to help with uh, COVID-related losses. What can you tell us about how that money will be allocated to cities, and um, what's the holdup in slowing that funding? Well, there's no, there's no holdup. We basically just agreed to it on Friday morning. Today uh, is Tuesday, so we're working... Uh, with the federal government just to get the details and I mentioned that to the the mayor as we're walking here as soon as I get the details we'll pass it on to the municipalities but it's a real boost uh, for the municipalities in transit and make no mistake about it I fought hard that was one of the biggest issues that I fought on uh, with uh, the feds and I can't say fought uh, discussed because there was no fighting involved to be frank with you uh, we discussed but we had hard discussions along with the other premiers so I'm happy we were able to come up with an agreement that's a win for municipalities, all 444 of them in, in the province, along with the federal government and the provincial government. So I just can't wait to get the money flowing and get it out there and start helping people. Follow-up? Thanks, Premier. In, in April, uh, the province passed changes to the Municipal Act, uh, limiting cities' kind of ability to enforce noise bylaws related to construction, yeah. uh, not just for health care facilities, but for all uh, construction activities between 6 a.m. and uh, 10 uh, PM. And I've heard from a few residents in Mississauga who say the longer construction hours, particularly in the morning, are causing strain uh, in an already tough situation. Uh, considering, you know, we're months into this pandemic now and uh, things are starting to open up again in the province, is there, is the, the change in noise enforcement something that you'd consider uh, reversing? No. We have to get these uh, done. This is uh, the closest residential or, or over there. I can't see any other residential around us here. And uh, this, this is for the seniors, this is for the most vulnerable people in society. And th this couldn't have happened without the mayor's cooperation, without uh, the great labor leaders here, without the minister, and without uh, obviously Michelle from Trillium. And I'll, I'll just give you the two minute story. Uh, you know, after talking to the minister, and we we're going through some major issues uh, at, the, at the peak of the pandemic, I thought, you know, we, we have to start building and uh, there's there's places out there that we're ready to build. So I called my Mich uh, my friend Michelle up and said, Michelle, do you, I understand you have property. Uh, what do you think of doing this? And you, you give Michelle, you want something done? You give it to Michelle. And anyone that knows Michelle, you know it's going to happen. Then I, I called up the great mayor, Mayor Crombie, and said, do you think we can do this? Get the uh, approvals through really quickly. And, and what an incredible mayor. Mayor Crombie is. She jumped all over it and said, let's get it together, talk to the labor uh, leaders and uh, reported back to the minister and said, hey, this is going to happen and this is exciting. We aren't going to just do it here. We're going to do it right across the province. But this is a perfect example. When you have collaboration for all parties right across the board, a typical project, even a regular development project, building an apartment or condos or whatever, can take three, four, even up to six years but this is proof when we work together, we're going to get this up from the time you see us put the shovel on the ground, we're going to push for seven months, unheard of anywhere in North America. Building a six-story building, two of them, 320 units each, in seven months, it's unheard of. And I'd love the media to be part of it, follow them through. They're going to be working 24-7. And again, nothing gets built without the phenomenal labor leadership in this province. They're phenomenal. Next question. Next question comes from Lucas Meyer from News Talk 1010. Please go ahead. Thank you very much. Uh, Premier, I want to discuss uh, what we are seeing in Ottawa right now. Um, Dr. Williams mentioned yesterday that they ideally do not want to roll back on going from uh, stage three back to stage two writ large, yeah. identify those places where the spikes are occurring and go from there. But if these are occurring at more kind of private parties and, and people going in groups with, that are too big, sort of throughout a region instead of an isolated place like a salon or a farm like we've seen in Windsor, um, what is the strategy in your mind in combating that? Well, good question. Uh, the, what concerned me the most, number one, are obviously the numbers, but they're really in three areas of the, the province that we saw a spike. What, what concerns me are the, the percentages of younger people. 57% of all those cases are people under the age of 39 and, and right up in the 20s. And I just have a message for the young people. Don't just, don't go to a party, simple. Because it's it might not be you, 
but it's going to be your parents or your grandparents, as I always say, or your neighbors or your friends or relatives. You're, you're hurting people by doing this and go back to the golden rule. Wear a mask. If you don't have a mask, keep six feet or, you know, two meters. Uh, practice social distancing. Continue to sanitize your hands and that. But, you know, I just ask people, just hold off on these parties. I, I don't know why everyone wants to party so badly, but enough. We, we, we have to keep this in control, and, and we will. We're going to continue focusing. We still have, if you take the three outbreak areas out of the equation, we're below 100. So I just wish uh, people would just be focused on day-to-day, -day, uh, their day-to-day -day lives. Follow-up? Thank you. So, Premier, in your mind, how do you do that? How do you reach, uh, if that is in fact what's driving this, how do you reach those, you know, people in the younger age categories uh, to bring those numbers down? And in your mind, how bad would it have to get in a particular region to go back writ large from stage three to stage two? Well, Lucas, hopefully we won't get there. You, you know something, guys, I say guys, the younger people, I travel around North America. My number one selling feature I wish Vic Fideli, our, our uh, trade minister, was here. I, all I do is brag about you guys. We have the brightest, and I believe it, the brightest, smartest people coming out of our colleges and universities anywhere in the world. And we can compete against anyone. And vast majority, 98% of all these young folks are following protocol procedures. And a couple percent are going little hog wild. Guys, you got to rein it in. Simple as that. Uh, you know, because it's, it's again, you may get through it, but maybe your grandparents won't get through it. So that's the way you got to think about it, and uh, just keep following the protocols as as we have the last uh, few months. The province is incredible. The 14 and a half million people have all been pulling in their weight, and you know something. I'm going to uh, pass this over to uh, the mayor. She deals with a lot of young people, and I'm sure she has a similar message. Oh, I got it. Okay. Thank you for this opportunity, Premier, and let me say that there was also a misrepresentation of the Peel numbers today. There is not an uptick in cases. Uh, we are migrating to a new data collection system that will mim mimic the provinces, and there was a bit of a backlog. So I'm happy to report, well, happy, 22 cases, not 57, four of which are in Mississauga. I am delighted that we have flattened the curve here in Mississauga. I've reported two days with zero increases, in fact. Uh, there are some household transmission uh, cases in, in, in certain pockets of our region, and that will prevent us, of course, from uh, moving to phase three for another week we want four weeks of declining numbers and we will have them by next week so premier i'm very hopeful that you'll move peel region and the city of toronto uh into phase three next week uh the message needs to be clear to our young people who think this who are maybe bored at home and it's summertime and want an opportunity to go out and party this is no t this is no time for partying this is very serious we are in the midst of a pandemic we need to be vigilant for a little while longer and if we are, we can certainly avert going into a, a lockdown once again, as we had to in the springtime, and avert that dreaded second wave that could come in the fall, sending us back to the beginning. So please, let's take this seriously. Think of your parents, your grandparents, anyone with an underlying health condition. Perhaps you have a pregnant mother or aunt, somebody to think of, somebody with a condition that may be, leave them vulnerable to contracting this, this virus. So please, young people, you need to respect the rules. They're there in place for everyone to follow. We're in this together. We'll get through this together and we'll do so stronger. So please respect the rules. And we're going to get that messaging out on all our channels of social media uh, um, to ensure that we're reaching the people who are who are breaching the rules and in, in fact in Mississauga we have great compliance but our bylaw officers mission is one of education uh, less so enforcement we want to inform people and educate them and we have ambassadors roaming our hotspots to help people remind people the rules of safe physical distancing and not gathering in groups thank you premier for this opportunity That's great. thank you thank you mayor next question great. Next question comes from Lauren Pelly from CBC News. Please go ahead. Hi, Lauren. Hi, Premier Ford. Um, 
we've been hearing that uh, there could be a lot of challenges in the months or even years ahead as hospitals try and uh, catch up with the backlog of all the canceled elective surgeries um, from earlier in the pandemic. Just wondering what you're hearing on that front and what your message would be for people who, you know, are still dealing with wait times on that. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you some of our plans, but the expert here is uh, Michelle, CEO of uh, Trillium. But uh, before I pass it over, Michelle, to hear what Trillium is doing, you know, they, they brought this to me the, the other day, as I, as I mentioned, and they said, hey, we, we can be going seven days a week. We can be going day and night to get the backlog, and they put time frames on each one of them. But we want to make sure that the people that are delivering it can, can do it, the stakeholders, be it Trillium Health or other hospitals around the, the province. Our goal as a, as a government, and I'm sure the goals of the hospital, is to get the backlog uh, cleaned up as, as quickly as possible. We'll put all the resources, we won't spare a penny, to make sure that all the equipments, no matter if they're MRIs or other uh, pieces of equipment, medical equipment, we're trying to utilize it around the clock. But keep in mind that the medical professionals too, uh, which have been absolutely incredible, that have been working around the clock, we have to make sure we have the capacity there to uh, to handle this and, and try to get caught up on the on the backlog. But again, I'll, I'll hand it over to Michelle Demanuel. So thank you for the question. It's an important one. We, we really as a hospital system here in Mississauga, and I would say many of my colleagues uh, are in similar situations, we're really working on a, a bit of a bifocal strategy where first and foremost getting our, us back up and operating to the levels that we were prior to uh, the virus uh, onset. And we're working with the government of Ontario and with our sister hospitals in a number of different ways to look at how do we increase our capacity over the coming months. Uh, that could involve um, working on weekends, um, adding an extra hour shift uh, to um, a, uh, a surgical block of time. It could mean uh, sharing capacity amongst our hospital system. We are a system. And, and so we are looking at a number of ways in which we can uh, both ensure we get back up and operating at our pre-COVID levels, but also expand our capacity to be able to deal with the backlog. This won't be easy. It will take a team approach. It will take a system approach. And it will take innovation in healthcare to be able to do that. And I have the confidence in our, in our team and in our partnerships that we have with our community to be able to achieve that. Thank you. Follow up. Folks, as I always say, Michelle's amazing, but every CEO is just as amazing as Michelle. I always say you're just a little, well, one of my favorites, Michelle, full disclosure. But in saying that, honestly, you listen to the quality of CEOs we have in this province running the healthcare system and the hospitals. They're the best of the best in the world. And I'm, I'm so grateful for all the work that they've done and all, all the help that they've provided to their local communities. Follow up. Uh, this is for Premier Ford again. Uh, you visited Leamington last week. That region has seen a spike in cases. The local hospital is going back to phase one of its visitor policy. Um, and we're learning from Ontario Health that only 19 farms in the region have been tested. Uh, I just want to hear a bit more about your plan to address this particular spike in cases, um, getting possibly more workers tested, and, and if you would even consider going back to stage one for that reason, uh, for that region, uh, if this trend continues. Well, we were briefed this morning. I had the health team on on the. Uh on the phone this morning, I was talking to the team that was going down there. We have an emergency team from Sunnybrook called EMAT, and they're down there as well, so it's all hands on deck. It's the same situation. There's a group of migrant workers that have spiked things up a, a little bit, but we're working with the farmers. We're going to continue testing on as many farms as, as possible, and like you said, there was uh, 19 farms. I, I think we're over 3,000 tests now and uh, we're going to continue uh, testing every single day, uh, working in a collaborative manner with the farmers and, and along with the public health down there and with the migrant workers. Next question. Next question comes from Christina Tenaglia from CP24. Please go ahead. Hi, Christina. Christina? 
Well, Sorry about that. Uh, let me start again. Hi, Premier. Hi, everyone. My Hi, first Christine. question is for the Premier. My follow-up is for Mayor Crombie. Uh, Mayor Crombie talked a bit about uh, education and compliance and not enforcement when it comes to the rules. And the message from public health units and the leaders of municipalities has mostly been one of education and encouraging compliance and not one of enforcement when it comes to, you know, the laws and guidance on physical distancing, social circles, and mask wearing. So given the increase in the numbers across the province uh, for the first time uh, above 200 since late June, why not ramp up enforcement? Well, there's two ways of the enforcement. There's the, the financial uh, fines. You know, Christine, I've never believed in, in really hitting someone with an $800 fine. People are hurting right now. They can barely pay their rent. They can barely pay their mortgages, put food on the table. And everyone's been doing such a great job listening. And there's always, you know, the odd bad apple that falls out of place. But, guys, you, you got to keep going. We have to keep moving forward. And, and as the mayor mentioned, uh, it's, it's about education. If you see some, someone doing something or large groups, break the group up. But, guys, everyone knows better. We're, we're spending more money on advertising with every media outlet, uh, both the, the mainstream media and ethnic media than in the history of Ontario. We're pouring money in for the education part of things, but it's up to the people and the people are incredible. They've been doing a great job. So I just, uh, I want people to keep moving forward and following the protocols. And I'll pass the next uh, question over to the mayor. Follow up. Actually, I was gonna say, I have the same question for uh, Mayor Crombie, but uh, now that you've clarified the numbers, uh, because it was looking like uh, things weren't looking very good in, in Peel Region uh, up until you clarified the numbers. Are you confident at this point that Peel Region will be able to move into stage three, let's say uh, for Friday, July the 31st, possibly? And if not, uh, what else are you going to do in, in the city of Mississauga and in your region if it's not going to be enforcement, for example, and you'll continue with the education and compliance? So certainly there's a different approach in Mississauga and Brampton, as you saw that Mayor Brown was pretty pretty adamant they were going to set fines very high and go after rule breakers in Mississauga. Our approach has been one of information uh, and, um, and really uh, re-education of people. And as I mentioned through the ambassador program, that we know that it's a greater risk moving into phase three. The risk of transmission is higher. And the last thing we want is, uh, is to uh, increase cases and go, go into lockdown once again and have all of us go working from home and, and lose all the gains that we have made. So we have to continue to be vigilant. And if that means getting the message out to our young people, we'll use those channels that are appropriate. We know what they're listening to. I've got kids at home. They're into TikTok and Instagram, and we got to get our messages out on those social media channels that they respect the rules because this isn't for just for their good. This is for all of our good. We need to come out of this, but we need to come out of it stronger, and we need to do that together. And we need their cooperation to do it because right now it appears 57% of the new cases are 39 year olds and younger so it's young people that are spreading this virus and we need to get the message out to them so for us in our in in mississauga it's a, it's a matter of education rather than enforcement but we are happy happy to lay charges of $100 or up to $300 in, in, in non-compliant situations if individuals refuse to wear uh, their mandatory mask in indoor public spaces or if uh, businesses aren't uh, complying with the rules and asking people why they aren't wearing masks. Of course, if they have a, a, a medical exemption, that's an, a, a very proper explanation. But if they don't, uh, they need to have, they can deny entry and, and so they should. Otherwise, they could get fined as well. So we need to remain vigilant because we want to, we want to move into phase three, but we understand very well that in phase three, the, the risk of transmission will be even higher. And that's why most of the mayors in the GTHA have asked that, uh, have imposed bylaws to make masks mandatory in indoor public spaces. Last question. Thank you. Thank you. Last question comes from Rob Ferguson from the Toronto Star. Please go ahead. Hi, Rob. Hi there, Premier. Uh, just in, in relation to we, we could, uh, these uh, spiking cases in young people, uh, particularly in Ottawa, but I'm, I'm sure it's happening elsewhere. That you, we keep hearing that the message is that you want to get the message out, but apparently it's not getting through. Um, don't you need to do more? Don't you need to take some other new steps? Um, because, you know, you've cited the uh, risks of heading down the Florida road and the, that sort of thing. 
Yeah, Rob, good good point. But you, you're you're doing a great job. The media is doing a great job getting the message out and put it into perspective. You know, out of the the millions and millions of young people under under the age of let's say under the age of of thirty, um, relatively speaking, there's there's a there's a small group. But what what really concerns me is just the last last day that we've seen this spike pop up in in a couple of regions. I'm glad the mayor pointed out that Mississauga only had four cases, uh, I think zero the other two days. And it, it's, it's I've never liked, and I've told our health team, clumping Peel region all under one, one roof. It's it's a massive, massive region with uh, over, over one point, what is it, 1.3, 1.4 million uh, people. And and there's over 700,000 here in, in Mississauga. They're doing a great job. So they, they shouldn't be punished at all. But let's just all continue keeping the, the message going. And it's up to the, the grandparents and the parents too to tell the, their grandchildren and their, and their teenage kids and younger people that, guys, enough of the partying. Go back to what we were doing before, social distancing, stay in your bubble, and we'll get through this together. Follow up. Uh, yeah, just a quick follow-up on the nursing home. Uh, nursing homes. Uh, I, I didn't catch the locations of these two homes from Mississauga, and when will we see con um, shovels in the ground? Well, you know something. Uh, the exact location. What's the address here? It's on Steepman Drive. St Steepman. Speakman. 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 Speak west of Aaron Mills Parkway and south of Dundas. Did you hear that? Speakman Drive, west of Aaron Mills. East so of east of south of Dundas. South of Dundas. So it's uh, stones will throw away from the hospital, but this is a, a great project, and uh, we're just so grateful for everyone's cooperation. And this, this is an example, Rob. If we can do it here, we can do it anywhere in Ontario. And what I love about this is the quick build aspect. Everyone pitching in, and I'd love the media to be in here. Like, I mean, show up at midnight, see these guys working, guys and gals working, and it's going to be going around the clock in seven months we'll have this piece of grass turn into 640 units. It's really, really amazing. And it all goes back to the cooperation with the hospital and with the mayor and, and our labor folks that are standing over to my left. These guys are true champions. And I just, am again, so grateful that uh, they're part of it. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thanks,